If you've been looking for him, you found him. From the middle of nowhere, it's the one, the only, multi media J. Well, well, well. March 21st, 2012. And it feels like, back in the day when I was growing up, the last day of summer vacation before going back to school. What is up, everybody? This is Multimedia J Radio Style, and today really does feel like the last day of summer vacation for me. And not just because of the outrageously, unseasonably warm weather and all the record-breaking that's been going on in the Northeast weather-wise, but tomorrow, I'll be going back to work. That's right, folks. I found a job. Yes, that's right. Disaster has been averted. I realize that something like this would normally be too mundane to be celebrating in more normal times, but as anybody who's followed the whole situation with the economy will tell you, we are not living in normal times at all. Matter of fact, this economy is a complete and total disaster. But that's another discussion for another day. What I'm really here to talk about today is an article that I ran into. It's posted on SaveTheNews.org. The headline reads, Making Community Radio a Reality by Candace Clement. Apparently, some recent changes over at the FCC are going to be changing the radio landscape around the country. Uh, here's a paragraph in the article, and as usual, I'll post a link in the description, as well as I think I'll add a pop-up link in uh, for an annotation. But the Local Community Radio Act did something amazing. In an era with, in which money is speech and the 1% is gaining endless ground on the rest of us, this bill opened the doors for hundreds, possibly even thousands, of new community radio stations to go on the air across the country. Country. These small, low-power FM stations called LPFMs reach a radius of only about 5 to 10 miles, but their impact is massive. Nonprofits run these non-commercial stations, which put the voices of people who actually live and work in our communities on the air. Now, this is huge in my book. A couple of years ago, when I first started the, uh, the Radio Style series, one of the things that I mentioned was folks have been telling me for years, probably because of how I sound, to find some way to get involved in radio. But one of the issues around this neck of the woods out here in the middle of nowhere is that there's next to no radio to be on around here. Plus, there's the whole radio nomad thing where a lot of the big stations are all in major cities, so... Anyone who wants a radio career will have to move from city to city in order to move from station to station. Then there's the whole curveball of non-compete clauses in um, in people's employment agreements, where if if say even if they so much as get laid off, they can't go to any other stations until whatever the time is that they can head back on the air. Plus, you could kind of say that the independent spirit of college radio kind of stuck with me even after my college radio days. You know, the whole thing where college radio stations want to play bands that commercial radio isn't playing to switch things up and things along those lines. But the folks behind that idea do have a point. Sometimes big box radio stations do kind of remind me of just music playing machines. And you got to wonder where the human element has gone. Even the radio personalities sometimes become rather predictable on these stations. Fortunately, I can already testify of what kind of positive effects opening up the radio world to more smaller competitors is going to uh, have on communities across the country because my neck of the woods just happens to have one of those types of stations even without the bill uh, being passed into law. It's not an LPFM. It's an actual AM radio station. Now, back when I first started the Radio Style series, I mentioned some of the stations around here, and one of them was some AM station that I didn't half know what they played. Well, that has changed a lot. Despite being an independent, small market community AM station, these folks got really technological and they started streaming online. So even though I've known about the station for a long time but never had a receiver that could pick up the signal very well, I could actually make a shortcut to that station on my desktop and just tune in with two clicks. That was when I found out just what I've been missing all these years. 
that small AM station that I didn't hardly know about is now one of my favorites. And my dad has been absolutely cracking up about all this because when I was looking for jobs in this job hunt that I just got done doing, I was actually setting the alarm to get up at 6 in the morning to listen to this small station's morning show. My dad was cracking up all over the place. He's like, Jay, you're a big tech guy and all, all that stuff. And you're getting up in the morning when you don't have to to listen to AM radio. Of course, I politely reminded him that I actually was technically being a little geeky by listening via the Internet. But still, I mean, actually, since then, I've purchased an amplified loop antenna to better pick up AM stations and set the uh, dial to favor the frequency that this station broadcasts at. So during the day, I can actually pick up a relatively decent sounding uh, signal, although it is kind of fuzzy and it sounds like AM and broadband actually sounds better. These folks do not fit the stereotypes of commercial radio that college radio folks like to make fun of. They absolutely shatter them. What does a station play? A little of everything. They play music sometimes, they have a morning show, they have an afternoon evening show, they have a talk show, and they have a decent assortment of weekend shows as well. I've definitely been missing a lot by not being able to tune into these folks. So now I've seen what all the hubbub's about with the various folks that I've known over the years who are from closer to that station that were always like, oh yeah, this station's awesome, the guy who runs it's a local celebrity and all that fun stuff. So it's a good thing that in a day and age where sometimes it seems like radio's lost its soul, that some smaller local stations can pop up to kind of change up the scenery a bit when someone spins the dial. Aside from the LPFM thing, though, broadband has some real serious potential in the world of radio, that's for sure. Quite frankly, I think broadband streams are the great equalizer in the world of radio. They finally closed the door on the whole AM-FM thing, and, oh, FM sounds better, you know, so FM stations should play more music, while AM, because it doesn't sound as good, should stick to just local news and talk and stuff like that. Broadband pretty much ends that nonsense and kind of levels the playing field for folks that are tuning in via double clicking and stuff like that. And this is just one of the many potential uses of broadband out there that are a reason why techies like me oppose bandwidth caps and other forms of broadband monetization because it does hold the technology back to make, to sell a service in which the people using that service have to worry sick about how they use that service instead of just plain making the most out of it because the service has tons of potential. I'd say that between all this LPFM stuff as well as broadband's potential, if that ever gets realized, the radio world is due up for some long overdue changes that no doubt will probably cause a lot of people to start tuning back in again. Like I did, big techie and all, yet listening to AM radio all over the place. Might as well be blasting the Everclear song or something like that. In any event, feel free to check the video description for a link to this article, and definitely check out the rest of the site as well. Because the whole state of journalism and media and stuff like that can get pretty interesting and, at times. Till next time, this is Multimedia J Radio Style. Don't touch that dial. <laughs>